Good day everyone and welcome back to another beautiful video on my channel. In this video, I am going to share my experience of visiting the Perth Zoo located in the city of Perth, Western Australia. There are a lot of different kind of animals and birds in this zoo and there are different events, encounters with different animals and programs being occurring in this zoo. There are Australian native animals and also animals brought from different other countries as well. So in this video you guys are going to watch them all and before we get into the video make sure you are subscribed to this channel to watch more interesting places like this and let's start our tour around the Perth Zoo. Perth Zoo is located in the Perth city itself and in a very convenient location where you can easily reach by any public transport. I visited the zoo during Christmas holidays and I would say it was a little bit crowded than the normal time. At the entrance of the zoo, you can see the ticket prices and buy entrance tickets. An adult ticket cost $34.6 and you can see other ticket prices displayed over there. I bought the ticket and with the ticket they gave me a map of the zoo as well to keep our navigation very easy. In the map, photos of the animals and where they are located is also clearly marked. Inside the zoo also, I saw a big similar map installed. First, I decided to go to the left to see the reptile encounter and Australian wetlands. Australia is home for a huge variety of venomous and non-venomous reptiles and let me show you what kind of reptiles I saw in the reptile section. In the reptile section, the first reptile I saw was gecko. They are carnivorous lizards in grey colour. I saw the first one on a branch at the top and another one on a rock. There were also another couple of geckos inside and totally I saw four of them inside the cage. It was a little bit hard to spot them, they were well camouflaged and it was mentioned that they were rescued from somewhere. The next reptile was Southern Pygmy's Piney Tailed Skink. I saw a couple of them in the glass cage. They were on a rock and hiding them well. These glass cages were very well designed as a natural habitat for the reptiles. The next reptile I found is a carpet python. It is the most common snake in Australia. It was rolled up well and resting behind a log. Corn snake was the next one. It is a native snake to North America. It's a snake with different and beautiful skin and I found him hiding himself behind the log and dry leaves. In the next cage, I saw tiger snake. It is called as tiger snake as its skin is like tiger and he was there in a corner. Water python is the next one. Under every cages, they have put more details about the snakes and where they are from. The water python is native to Northern Territory and you can find more details about it in the information board. Rough-scaled python is a rare species from northwest Kimberley in Australia. It was in the next place and he was resting in between a rock and a log. The dagoite is a species of venomous and potentially lethal snake native to western Australia. It is a black, shiny and beautiful snake. 
black-headed python is another famous snake native to northern territory of Australia. Even though it is often mistaken as a venomous snake, it is a non-venomous snake and a very beautiful snake. It was lifting his head up, looking at everyone and trying to climb up onto the glass wall. The next snake is Warmer Python. It is native to Central and Western Australia. There were like two to three snakes inside that glass cage. Olive Python is one of the biggest snakes in Australia and it is native to Northern Territory. They even eat wallabies and some birds as their food. I found a couple of beautiful shiny and black pythons there. Parent is the Australian largest lizard and it's the second largest lizard in the world. It can grow up to 2.5 meter in length. I saw one of them in the reptile section. There were also many small different kinds of lizards kept there. In the next place, I saw a Centralian blue tongue skink, inland bearded dragon, and western spiny tailed skink cuddling to each other and relaxing. The bond between them looked very beautiful. Most of the lizard types, they were fed green leaves and I believe they were just provided with their lunch at that time. Finishing up the reptile section, I went to the next section, penguins. In the penguin section, there were a group of little penguins swimming in a big man-made pool. They were swimming here and there in a group and making noises and through a glass window, many kids and even grown-ups were enjoying and admiring them. Penguins are such a cool creature. After spending some time with the penguins, I moved on to the next section. Discover the wonders of wetland. The next place I went was the Australian wetlands. It was a place where I saw a lot of wetlands birds. There were many varieties of beautiful birds like Brolga, Glow Sea Bees, Green Pygmy Goose, Australasian Shavala, etc. That place was also beautifully created with a lot of trees, shrubs and small plants around the water and rocks, logs and aquatic plants were installed inside the lakes, looking very nice and natural as wetlands. There were a lot of birds there and they were very happily living there. After the wetlands, I went to visit the section of crocodiles. In the first place, it was mentioned as there is a crocodile, but I couldn't find one there. It might have gone or hid somewhere. Next to the crocodile, there was a big fish tank. I saw some different kinds of fishes in that tank with some turtles. There were also a few very big fishes. I think they might be barramundi fishes. 
There was also another small tank and some beautiful tiny fishes in that. In the next section in the wetlands, I saw a crocodile. When you look at the far carefully, you can find him as well. Finishing up the wetlands, the next section I went is called as Birds of the Southwest. There were some information boards hanged at the front giving us some information and details about the birds kept there. It was also mentioned some of the birds in that section were rescued from different dangerous situations and kept in that zoo. As the bird section got a lot of plants and secured completely with mesh nets, I couldn't see many birds there, but with the bird sounds I heard, I could say there were a lot of different kinds of birds there. I also saw the names and details of some birds being there. As there was nothing much to see in that bird section, I went to the next place where I saw some details about the Perth Zoo. It is said that the Perth Zoo was opened in 1898 and back in the days there were not many animals and birds kept in the zoo. There were also some photos of old zoo displayed there. Next to that information board, there were some caves where the animals were kept in the old times. In the past, they were built with natural rock and thick steel. Inside the caves, some animals' toys were also kept to add more interest to the viewers. Australia's native animals like emu, echidna and kangaroo were kept in the next part of the zoo. That place was very beautiful. It was made of plants, rocks and small man-made waterfalls and fountains to make it naturally attractive and as an animals and birds habitat. First, I saw an emu resting on the ground and next to it was another one standing and looked at me for a while. Then it slowly started walking searching for some food. Emus are intelligent birds and there is an interesting story in Australian history where the Australian army was defeated by a group of emu birds. You can find that one on internet. Next to the emus, there was an echidna. It is also a mammal native to Australia. Echidnas are medium-sized, solitary mammals covered with horse hair and spines. They also have tiny face with small eyes and a long nose. He was so active when I visited him, chasing after insects and ants to eat. Going past the echidna, I entered the section for kangaroos. In an information board there, there were some details about kangaroos. There are four types of kangaroos in Australia. Red kangaroo, western grey kangaroo, tamu wallaby and western brush wallaby. I saw some of the kangaroos there were eating something, some of them were playing with each other and some of them were just lying on the ground and taking rest. Wallaby is also a mammal belongs to kangaroos class. There were few of them kept in that section with kangaroos. After kangaroos, the next section was for cockatoos. 
it was also mentioned there are some of them were rescued and kept there. It was very hard to find them inside but anyhow I spotted a couple of black cockatoos and if you see clearly you can find them too. After that I started walking towards the next section which is called as Asian Rainforest. In the Asian Rainforest section the animals which are native to Asian continent were kept. At the entrance of the Asian rainforest, we can find an old temple-like structure which is very common in Asian countries. The first animal I came to see was a Komodo dragon. There was a statue of a Komodo dragon there and it was also mentioned that it is the world's largest living lizard. It can grow up to 3 meter and weigh up to 70 kilograms. There was a Komodo dragon inside the cage and he was a very big lizard in the size of a crocodile. It was just lying on the ground without any movement. It was not even interested to see his visitors. These lizards normally hunt and eat buffalo, chicken, insects and when they are extremely hungry they can even hunt and eat humans too. But it's very very rare. The next animals I saw is called as otters. They are native animals to the countries like Indonesia, Singapore, Java and Malaysia and they were brought to the zoo and looked after. You can find more information about them in the information board there. At the far inside the cage, I found a couple of them on a log and some of them at the back. Red panda is the animal I came to see next. There was an interesting fact about them. They urinate around their boundary like lions to demarcate their boundary and to keep any other animals away from their place. I saw one red panda on the branch of a tree at the far. He looked like searching for something actively. The next animal I visited is called as sun bear. It is the smallest bear type in the world. I couldn't find the sun bear inside the cage as he was well hidden at the back somewhere among the plants. Most of us know there are Asian and African elephants and in one information board interesting facts about both types of elephants were displayed. It is also said that Asian elephants are facing many threats and reducing in numbers. Only 13 Asian countries have elephants and the governments of respective countries are taking measures to protect the endangered species. In that section at the far I saw an Asian elephant. Also a zookeeper told me that they bring the elephants closer when there are any shows only. So unfortunately, we were looking at that elephant from a long distance. There was also another elephant around the corner. He was also doing something on his own and keeping him busy. Finishing the Asian rainforest section, my next stop was African Savannah. I came to the next section called as Jungle School. That is a part of the zoo where they train rescued orangutans. There were tall towers and ropes in that section where I saw a couple of orangutans. They were hanging, swinging around and having fun in their own space.
Next, in the African savanna section, I went to visit the zebras and giraffes. At the far, I could be able to see a couple of zebras, but one of the guides told me that the giraffes were taken inside for their meal time. Unfortunately, we couldn't see them. Next, I saw some meerkits as well. They were very active and playing around. After that, I saw a hyena which was brought from Africa and was getting looked after in that zoo. He was hiding behind a tree and looking at us. The hyenas are also equally strong and dangerous animals like lions and tigers. Radiated tortoise were the next reptiles. There were a few in that place and kids really enjoyed watching them. In the next cage, I saw a lion. It was a female. She was sitting there and looking at something very seriously. There were also another lion or a couple roaming at the background behind the trees and shrubs. I think they were called by their zookeeper for their meal time or something else. There are five different kinds of rhinoceros in the world. White rhino, black rhino, Indian rhino, Sumatran rhino, and Javan rhino. There was an information board about rhinoceros with some facts about them in the next place, and I saw a couple of African rhinos there. They looked very big, and they were eating dry grass very calmly. Baboons normally live with their family. I saw a family of baboons chilling out in one place. Painted dogs are the next animals I saw. There were a few of them. They are native animals to Africa, brought from there and taken care in that zoo. They might look pretty similar to hyenas, but they are not. Premier Trail is the next place where there were a variety of small monkeys were kept. Let's look at them one by one now. Emperor Tamarin is the first kind of primate I saw there. There were a couple at the front. They are small, cute monkeys with white moustache. In addition to the two at the front, there were some at the back as well. Pygmy Mamaset is the next one. I saw one at the far hanging onto the net and few others hanging onto the branches and hiding themselves. In the next cage, there was a beautiful common mama said looking at me. Next to the common mama said is Bolivian squirrel monkey. There was a small fellow inside the cage hopping and jumping around. Black and white raft luma was also another type of primate kept there and I saw one of them in the cage. Finishing with the primates, the next place I went was Nocturnal House where the animals and birds active during the night time were kept. It was a very dark place and we were instructed to keep very quiet not to disturb the animals and birds. First, I saw red-tailed Pascogale and tawny frogmouth owl. The Pascogale was running around and the owl was on a branch. As it was very dark inside, it was a little bit hard to find those animals and birds. No 
northern spiny-tailed gecko and goldfield spiny-tailed gecko were kept in the next cage. I saw both of them there. One of them were in the top branch and the other one was in the bottom one. Jungle python was also another nocturnal reptile kept there. It was resting on top of a branch. Bilby is a long-eared rabbit-like mammal native to Australia. They were also kept in that section. I saw a couple of them running on the ground and searching for food. Australian Owlet Niger was also on a branch at the far in the next cage. You can also see it. It's a small nocturnal bird. Finishing with the nocturnal house, the last section I visited in that zoo had tree kangaroos and cassowary birds. Tree kangaroos are very cute and hairy mammals like big squirrel. I saw one of them walking on the branches at the farm. When past the tree kangaroo, I saw a cassowary bird there. It was a little bit scared and running here and there. Cassowaries are beautiful and big birds like emu and they lay eggs which weigh nearly 10 times heavier than chicken eggs. With visiting those two in the last section, my tour around the Perth Zoo came to an end. I'm also wrapping up this video here and I hope you guys would have enjoyed this video too around the Perth Zoo. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up on this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all in another beautiful video. Till then, thanks for watching and cheers.